Our readings from 1 Samuel and the Gospel of Mark clearly situates the proper place of ritual in the story of our process of becoming our full and complete humanity. The first reading from 1 Samuel 16 tells of the identification and anointing of David by the prophet Samuel. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, there, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. David was a heroic figure in the Hebrew Bible. In his book on the Old Testament, scripture scholar Michael Coogan explains, in 1 Samuel, David is almost without exception a heroic figure. In part, this is because the Deuteronomistic historian's principal source for David was the history of David's rise, a propagandistic presentation of David as the legitimate successor to the divinely rejected Saul. While the historical interpretation of the composition of the text is fascinating, the most important point for us to take away from this story today is that David was a hero of the Hebrew scriptures. It should therefore not be surprising to us that Jesus relies on the story of David from 1 Samuel chapter 21 in his rebuke of the Pharisees in today's gospel. When asked why his disciples pick grain on the Sabbath in violation of religious law, Jesus reminds them that the hero, David, did the same. David sought bread for himself and his soldiers. When there was no ordinary bread, a priest offered him holy bread. David's actions were outside of the ritualistic prescriptions, but it is obvious to the hearer of this story that a little rule bending was appropriate in this case. And this also seems to be the lesson of Mark's account. However, the message of the gospel story is less about moral teachings about ritual and more so a point about Jesus. Did you read the gospel passage to the end? The conclusion is not the Sabbath was made for man, but rather that is why the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. In his book, The Moral Vision of the New Testament, Duke professor Richard Hayes notes that Mark's gospel includes elusive riddles whose purpose is to establish claims about the identity and authority of Jesus. Now, reading today's gospel passage from this perspective reveals that the story is primarily about who Jesus is rather than what we should do with ritual and religious laws. So who is Jesus? He is Lord of the Sabbath. His authority is prior to our rituals. I often remind my students that our religion is a human vehicle for encounter with Jesus, not the object of our devotion. And Jesus models our fullest and most complete humanity. To be fully human then means putting our humanity over the rules and rituals of organized religion, or does it? For further insight, I have been reflecting on ritual in another religious tradition, Confucianism. For the great teacher of ancient China, ritual is one of the paths to experiencing full humanity. In a Confucian mindset, a human person is only a person in relation to other people. This entire ethic is grounded in right relationships. And a means of cultivating these relationships is through ritual, propriety, and appropriateness. In his popular book, The Path, What Chinese Philosophers Can Teach Us About the Good Life, Harvard scholar Michael Pewitt explains Confucian ritual as as if exercises in which people play roles that ultimately improve their character. 
Pewitt notes that in our ordinary lives, we engage in as-if rituals all the time. He writes, Couples who are in the habit of saying, I love you, probably do not feel fully loving every second of the day. They almost certainly have a bevy of complicated feelings toward their partner from time to time. But there is a greater good in nurturing the relationship through such rituals that let them break from reality and enter a space where it's as if they do love each other fully and at every moment. At the moment, they express their love in an as-if way. They are really doing it. So what are the as-if rituals that are central to our Christian life? The wisdom of Confucius reminds us that ritual can be an important tool in the cultivation of our full humanity when ritual serves and improves human relationships, since we are created as social creatures. Likewise, our ritual must enhance our sense of community and cultivate the best of our social nature. This insight is entirely consistent with our Christian faith in which Jesus' life was a model of messy and complicated relationships with frustration, arguments, rebukes, and misunderstandings, as well as selfless love, acceptance, forgiveness, and welcome. Jesus' holiness was practiced in his relationships with others, not social withdrawal or sectarian isolation. The Sabbath was made for us, I suggest we ask ourselves if the rituals and rules of our faith tradition are changing us for the better and bringing us closer to one another. When we receive communion together around the table at Mass, when we join in the liturgical life of the Church in support of our whole Church, are we welcoming all of its members? Are we cultivating the loving community of discipleship? If on the other hand, we make the ritual and the rules the end goal, we run the risk of not only being like the Pharisees in the story, we run the risk of diminishing our community by exclusion, sacrificing human community for ritual purity and communal perfectionism. Father Henry Nouwen reminds us to pray to listen to the voice of the one who calls us the beloved is to learn that that voice excludes no one. And that is why the Son of Man, in his life of compassion and example of welcome, is Lord, even of the Sabbath.